Greetings from England for another video here on my channel. Um, I thought this evening we might have a little look. Well, there's been lots of stuff going on. Crazy. Seems like a crazy time in the church, doesn't it? There's so much stuff going on. And there are a number of different options that um, I could have chosen to run through this evening. And uh, one of the things that perhaps we'll do another video is... Uh, a new letter from Archbishop uh, from Bishop Strickland of Tyler. You can read it on my blog here. Um, I've posted the letter with a link to the original on Bishop Strickland's website and some comments that I've made there in red. You can see. Um, so I was going to do that one, and then I, I came across. Well, the, the, like, there's also the Pope has a. Uh, sort of written a letter to the German bishops and um, it, so some people are saying oh he's spoken out about Germany and that's brilliant uh, so you know there's stuff that needs to be spoken about there because for me I just it was a letter that to some ladies that was leaked and I don't know why he can't ever just say what if that's what he means I don't know why he can't say it but you know, there you go. We've got to sort of take what we can, haven't we? So, um, some quite extraordinary news about um, Cardinal Leo Raymond Burke, who um, it was one of the most prominent cardinals for a long while before Pope. Well, and I suppose he has been. I wonder if he's become more prominent since Pope Francis um, has been elected to the papacy. Uh, because from the very beginning, it was obvious that Pope Francis didn't like him. Um, and he was a really important cardinal. Um, he's from the Archdiocese of St. Louis, um, which he ran. And uh, then he ran the Diocese of La Crosse up until 2004. Um, from 2004 to 2014, he was the prefect of the Supreme Tribunal for the Apostolic Signatura. I'm trying to get that right, which, which is like the highest canon law position um, that there is, basically. So what's been going on? So yesterday, and I didn't do anything on it yesterday because um, it seemed like it could easily be a bit of a spurious report, but that this is a this is a newspaper like an Italian based um, media outlet called the New Daily Compass, and they report they had this report that um, Vatican sources had said that Burke was defined as an enemy uh, in an announcement made to the media to the heads of dicasteries of the Roman Curia, and I did a little bit. I've got a contact at this paper and. Um, did a little bit of digging, and apparently it had been, you know, it had been said, and put someone had heard it. So that was uh, the the sort of drama there. So they had reported it. Now with these things, you know, there's no um, real. It's difficult, isn't it? Because you you know, is it like is it just a bit of hearsay or whatever? It's really difficult to know um, how much truth there is sometimes in these things. So. Um, just like, it's not sure I'm going to be able to read it. Uh, so, let me get on that. so the title of the uh, the piece is "The Pope," in quotation marks, away with Cardinal Burke's house and salary. Vatican sources close to the Daily Compass say that Burke was defined as an enemy in an announcement made to the heads of the dicasteries of the Roman Curia. The Cardinal has not yet received any formal notice, but considering precedence, it's likely to be just a threat, which nonetheless would be very serious. The article reads, Cardinal Burke is my enemy, so I am taking away his flat and salary. This is what Pope Francis supposedly said at a meeting with the heads of the dicasteries of the Roman Curia last November, well, the 20th, so it was just eight days ago, and which a Vatican source revealed to the Daily Compass. 
The indiscretion was later confirmed by other sources. As far as we are aware, Cardinal Raymond L. Burke, currently in the United States, has not yet received formal notice confirming the Pope's words. But given the precedents, most recently the case of Monsignor Ganswain, former personal secretary of Pope Benedict XVI, there's little doubt that the words will be followed by deeds, nor would the difficulty in canonically justifying such a measure be an obstacle, given the contempt for the laws of the church also shown by Pope Francis on the occasion of the removal of the bishops from their diocese. So that is the Bishop of Puerto Rico, who was followed then by uh, Bishop Joseph Strickland. And the point that the that New Daily Compass is making is that despite the canonical norm which would say that he would that the pope so the pope has got the authority as the supreme legislator but um it, you know in the, in the service of justice you would expect him to there would be a sound reason and canon law does state that in order to remove a bishop there has to be a, a, a delict there has to be a problem um and it would be it would be normative and it's not a normal thing, is it? So it's difficult to talk about precedents, and there aren't really any precedents for this sort of thing. Bishops have been removed, but they've been removed for, for good reasons before, um, and not no reason given. So this this is a, it's hard not to see it as a big escalation, um, and, and the Pope just sort of carelessly throwing his weight around. The alleged enmity of Cardinal Burke has become a real obsession for Pope Francis in recent times. But in reality, the American Cardinal has been in the crosshairs since the beginning of the, his, his, his pontificate, probably because he encapsulates some of the elements that most annoy him. He is American and is a constant reminder of the doctrine and tradition of the church. And in addition, he resides in Rome, a stone's throw from St. Peter's Square, where the Pope will think he can plot against him. I mean, this is it's uh, screwball stuff really isn't it I, I can't help but think you know pope francis was the archbishop of argentina um and of buenos aires so you kind of think in argentina so you kind of think how what could he have known of cardinal Burke to really dislike him as much as he appear i mean it, it's you couldn't say that he it's not obvious that he doesn't like cardinal Burke. Um, it seemed from the very beginning that he just went right against him. So, it, it, I mean, it really does make you wonder what, why, why he doesn't like him, except for the fact that, as reported there by New Daily Compass, he's he is like this um, faithful American cardinal, and he's been very high up in the curia. So it goes on, Cardinal Burke has been very clear in his criticisms of the concept of synodality, which has now become a mantra intended to change the nature of the church. And at the conference, the Synodal Babel on the 3rd of October, organized in Rome by La Bossola, precisely on the eve of the opening of the synod and synodality, his arguments and his direct polemic with the new prefect of the Dicastria of the Doctrine of Faith, Victor Tucho Fernandez, who had called Cardinal Burke a heretic and a schismatic, and those who asked the Pope to safeguard and promote the depositum fide had made a lot of noise. I'm not sure that makes any sense. Uh, let's have another look. With the new, uh, his arguments and direct polemic with the new prefect of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, Fernandez, who had called Burke a heretic and a schismatic, and those who asked the Pope to safeguard and promote the Jewish the deposit of faith had made a lot of noise. After all, calling the Pope to task is part of the Cardinal's duty, exactly. And Francis himself has repeatedly encouraged in words, parousia. Now, that says parousia, right? That is, which is not the right word. <laughs> the Greek word parousia, which is P-A-R-R-E-S-I-A. That's that's the word that it should be. Perusia is the second coming of Christ. But parousia means like a strong argument. And that's what the Pope has used that word um, to suggest that's what he wants from his bishops, that he wants this form of collegiality. But all the evidence is to the contrary, isn't it? It's very difficult to see how, it, how that's the fact of the matter. 
And Cardinal Burke has always strongly rejected the label of enemy of the Pope that they have wanted to stick on him since the beginning of the pontificate, especially since he criticised the position of Walter Caspar, Cardinal Walter Caspar, who in preparation for the 2014 Synod on the Family was explicitly called for access to communion for remarried divorcees. Burke was in good company, yet especially against him, a real campaign of demonization was focused, painted as the director of occult plots against Pope Francis, accusations that Burke has always strongly rejected. Before that, however, in December 2013, the Pope had already removed him as a member for the Congregation of Bishops, replacing him with Cardinal Donald Whirl, who is decidedly liberal and, as it happened, linked to former serial abuser Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. And after his participation in the book, Remaining in the Truth of Christ, which also featured contributions from Cardinal Kafara, Branmuller, Muller, and the Paulis, Burke, who is a talented canonist, was also removed in 2014 from the post of Prefect for the Apostolic Signatura, which he had been called to by Benedict XVI in 2008. Instead, he was entrusted with the post of Patron of the Sovereign Order of Malta, a minor position for still young and act for a still young and active cardinal. Yet after the science, so that was and that was seen as a slap in the face, you know, really, from the Pope. He was a, it was an insult. But Cardinal Burke took it really well and made loads of it. He made the most of it and travelled around and everything. So they kind of uh, took. So Pope Francis went again and took the power of that away from him. Um, the appointment of special of a, a special delegate of the Pope, first Cardinal Betu and then Cardinal Tomasi, although he not so, yeah, in twenty seventeen he was effectively deprived of his office as patron of the Order of Malta, um, with the appointment of a special delegate, although he no longer had any contact with the Order's members and no role in the whole troubled renewal of the statutes. Cardinal Burke formally resigned in June this year on reaching the fateful age of 75 and was immediately replaced by the 81-year-old Cardinal Ghirlanda, just to add insult to injury. So, I mean, the Pope really has, you know, been very rude to Cardinal Burke since, since the beginning. In the meantime, however, in recent years, Pope Francis has never missed an opportunity to launch personal jibes at Cardinal Burke, reaching a climax when unfortunate, to put it mildly, with an unfortunate joke uttered while Cardinal Burke was struggling between life and death because of COVID. Even in the College of Cardinals, there are some denies, the Pope said with a satisfied smile, in the press conference on the plane returning from his trip to Hungary and Slovakia on the 15th of September, 2021. And one of them, poor man, is hospitalised with a virus. Can you imagine? Unbelievable behaviour from the Pope. This has become normal though now, isn't it, with Pope Francis? The second round of dubia presented last July together with the Cardinals Bramula, Sarah Zen and Sandoval, but only made a public on the 2nd of October, will, not, will undoubtedly have irritated the Pope even more, who seems to have let go of his inhibitions after the death of Benedict XVI last January. Thus, the new prefect for the dicastery of the Doctrine of Faith, that's Tucho Fernandez, was able to personally target Cardinal Burke in the aforementioned interview with the National Catholic Register in September in what, in retrospect, can be considered a warning. Yeah. And now here we come to the Pope's announced decision to strike Cardinal Burke directly, taking away his flat and salary, a serious and unprecedented measure in defiance of every legal and ecclesial principle. One may think that the real purpose is to remove Burke from Rome, weakening the camp of those who resist the revolution in progress. As a conclave approaches, it is also a warning to those who work in the Roman Curia, the fact is the end of this pontificate is in, increasingly resembles in its methods a, a, a South American dictatorship. I think that is definitely the case. So there's another um, report on this in Marotta, in Marotta Chaley, which is like a tr uh, really uh, well-read traditionalist sort of blog. Um, And uh, it's worth reading through because it's got some some really good details in it. So this is the text here, and I'm going to have a little read through. So, um, and it was this was posted 
by DC Rosary Rally. I've been known to uh, publish a bits myself on uh, Burrata Chaley, but okay. So according to a well source report in the New Daily Compass, Pope Francis told the heads of dicasteries as follows their November 20, 23rd meeting, Cardinal Burke is my enemy, so I am taking away his flat and salary. This statement will come as no surprise to those who have closely followed Francis Pontificate. Cardinal Burke was reportedly one of the few who warned his fellow cardinals of Bergoglio at the conclave that elected him in 2013. Further, Cardinal Burke angers Francis because he's an American and is a reminder of the doctrine and tradition of the church. It just seems crazy, doesn't it? That, um, you know, that the doctrine and tradition of the church angers Francis. And Burke isn't, you know, like he's portrayed sometimes, he's caricatured since Pope Francis has been the Pope as being this like crazed traditionalist, um, especially for wearing the Kappa Magna, which is this long uh, cardinal's vestment that um, always used to be worn. To sh and it's like these vestments have got... Uh, tradition uh, got a real significance and the significance is that of the willingness of a cardinal to spill his blood for the church so that's the importance of that sort of thing it's not um drawing attention to one's own importance or anything like that it's a sign of sacrifice so it really is frustrating to see that the pope has got such petty and vindictive hatred for this man but you can't argue that he hasn't got it because it, there's a series of actions, a, con, a continual series of actions against Burke. Now, I did actually meet Cardinal Burke once myself. And what I found was that he is a extraordinarily intelligent and very, very gentle and erudite man. He's very quiet and sort of, you know, um, carefully spoken, a real gentleman of the church. And clearly someone who believes very deeply in his role takes it very seriously. So you can see in this in this pontificate where we've got this um like this culture that's grown up of promoting people who are abusers, like Sanchetta, um it, obviously Pope Francis rehabilitated McCarrick um after Pope Benedict had sent had, had censured him and um the Pope just consistently seems to find broken men and elevates them to high position. And this is a tactic that we've, you know, heard of before. It's a way that people use, like, and, um, use manipulation and control because they these people would never have risen to high office if it wasn't for the person who put them there. And then they've got something over you so that you have to sort of do what you're told. So... Um, Cardinal Burke, a man of integrity and intelligence, would be, you know, wouldn't be much use to Pope Francis because he'd, he'd stand in the way, wouldn't he, of his agenda that we see unfolding now through the synod, the synodality, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, I think it's a good thing because it's it's making that increasingly clear. If, you know, like with the Jubia and all these things, if there wasn't a problem, then why doesn't the Pope just answer plainly why all this prevarication all the time in the in Murata Chale it goes on if true this would be part of an escalating pattern of retaliation against Cardinal Burke by Pope Francis in December 2013 Pope Francis removed Burke as a member of the congregation of bishops and replaced him with the now disgraced Cardinal Donald Whirl a close ally of the sex predator Cardinal Theodore McCarrick so I think that was one of the the things was as soon as Pope Francis was elected, one of his first actions was to, um, I'm trying to think of the right adjective, to attack Cardinal Burke, which at the time seemed extraordinary and disgraceful because um, Cardinal Burke was very high up in the Curia. Cardinal Burke was removed from his post as prefect for the Apostolic Signatura by Francis in November 2014 and given the minor post of patron of the Sovereign Order of Malta. After signing at the Dubia, seeking clarity regarding the Pope's intentions for Amoris Laetitia, that was the Dubia that was never answered, by the way, Burke was effectively deprived of that post in 2017. And, like, all this is really petty, don't you think? There's no, 
engagement. There's no discussion. As with Strickland, you know, I thought for a Pope who's constantly talking about mercy and dialogue, you would have thought that the obvious thing for Pope Francis to do would be to pick up the phone and have a chat with Bishop Strickland and say, look, what's your problem? You know, why are you upset? And to, as a brother bishop to talk to him and say to him, you know, to calm his fears. The fact that he hasn't done that and he's not prepared to enter into dialogue with bishops who are simply stating the catechism, it makes you think that there can only be one answer. And that answer is that the Pope does have the agenda that he's being accused of. Um, so Burke formally resigned as patron this June, long after he had ceased to have any active role and was immediately replaced. In the meantime, Pope Francis and his allies have continued to make cutting remarks and personal jibes at Cardinal Burke, with Francis jeering at the Cardinal as a denier when he was seriously ill with COVID. I mean, that is not the act of a, of a Christian, is it, you know? Although not confirmed, this rumour is eminently believable given Pope Francis' treatment of perceived enemies, including in the most extreme case his war against the priests and laity who worship at the traditional Latin Mass. It's also confirmed by Francis' hasty demotion of Benedict XVI's personal secretary, Georg Ganswein, and his summary removal of the American Cardinal, jo uh, Cardinal, it says Cardinal there, but his bishop, Joseph Strickland for his social media posts critical of Francis. Peronism and the friend-enemy distinction on which it is based is a most appalling and uncatholic doctrine, especially when used against other Catholics. Yet it is the guiding theme of this pontificate. Let us pray for our bishops and cardinals who are subject to Francis and many priests and lay people has hurt. There are many and the many priests and lay people he has hurt and will hurt in the future. So it says there that this isn't confirmed, but it has been confirmed um, since then by the Associated Press. And this was first brought to my attention, really. Um, I saw this tweet by the papal biographer Austin Ivory, um, which is an incredibly gloating tweet, really. And it's uh, posted, it posts an article to an Italian um, language out there, which confirms it. And then later on, there's this post from um, the Associated Press, which again, you know, confirms it. Um, and the Associated Press article apparently has got two um, corroborations. Um, the, the headline is the Pope punishes leading critic Cardinal Burke in second action against conservative American prelates. It says Pope Francis has decided to punish one of his high, highest ranking critics, Cardinal Raymond Burke, by revoking his right to a subsidised Vatican apartment and a salary in the second such radical action against a conservative American prelate this month, according to two people briefed on the measures. Francis told a meeting of the heads of Vatican offices that he was moving against Burke because he was a source of disunity in the church. Uh, that's what a joke that is. Come from the Pope, literally the Pope of confusion. Um, I mean, what about the German bishops? The German bishops are in open breach of direct um, Vatican directives. And the Pope seems to be having a sort of jolly old time. He's certainly not doing this sort of thing to them, is he? Um, Again, that makes you think that this is part of his agenda. The way that he talks about the the Germans is um, the language in the in the letters that he's, he's sending them is, oh, we have to move together, you know, we must break step. So it's like this change is it's almost signalling or it, it reads to me like this change is coming, but you have to be patient with me and let me get there in my own time, which, you know, I mean, it's like they're forcing his hand. They're not happy with the speed of change. Um, so, but the, it's like he's saying that the change is coming. So the AP article says twice Burke has joined other conservative cardinals initiating formal questions known as dubia. Um, and it says that um, earlier this month, Francis forcibly removed the Bishop of Tyler. In a, tu in a tweet on Tuesday, Strickland expressed shock at reports that Francis had taken action against his fellow American which was first reported by the conservative Italian newspaper La Nuova Basola 
Quoto Diane, the main sponsor of the Synodal Babel. So that's that conference. Um, if this is accurate, it's an atrocity that must be opposed to this. I think that all the, all our American friends rightly look up to Cardinal Burke, and um, he, as he was the highest placed American in the in the Curia, um, certainly at the beginning of the pontificate, all those years ago, let us feels like light years ago, um, a lot of people thought that Burke would be able to resolve the problems with the Francis pontificate. But if you've been, I mean, obviously Cardinal Burke has given lots of interviews and. Um, posted lots of things, and he and he's always positioned himself as a friend of the Pope. So, uh, and you have to say that is what the Pope has asked for. Paris, he's asked for Parisea. He's asked for um, proper dialogue with the bishops for his bishops to be open. But when they are open, the way he re he retaliates incredibly um, arbitrarily and in a draconian fashion. So. Uh, the funny thing for me is that this is this is another one of those things that can can't do Cardinal Burke any harm. I don't think. Uh, I would imagine that the that the American people, just like uh, Bishop Strickland, they will rally behind their cardinal, and it will probably put Burke in a more powerful position. But this is a sign of the escalation of the war that I've been talking about. Um, I wrote an article in the Catholic Herald, I'll link it in the show notes, uh, about the um, the continuing arguments that are going on in between Cardinal Christophe Pierre, who is sort of pushing the Pope Francis agenda and coming out of all this stuff about a parasida, and, which doesn't really hold water. The, the things that he's saying don't really make an awful lot of sense, especially because the the situation in South America is that there's an incredible disaffiliation, a terrible disaffiliation rate for Catholics, that they're falling away and joining the Pentecostal churches. So whatever they've instigated down there is not working. Why on earth are we thinking about applying it to um, North America? Um, successful, not, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's the the disaffiliation rates we're seeing throughout the Catholic Church in the West are part of a larger cultural change. They're not necessarily down to, um, you know, governance or, or those sorts of things. And there are always things that we can um, do to change the way, like we've got to constantly think about the way that the, the gospel message is ever new, ever ancient, um, and it, we need to make sure that that message is spoken to young people. But all the, everyone I speak to says that the problem really is that the gospel message isn't being passed on to young people, and that the challenge of the gospel isn't being passed on, and that really is what the problem is. So, you know, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> what the answer is. Uh, but, I, well, I think I do know what the answer is, and I think the answer is that we just have to preach the gospel, don't we? We have to be faithful and do it the way that it's it's always been done and have the courage to do that. The problem, I, as I see it through my lifetime, um, is that we haven't been doing that, and so people don't know the, the transformative message of the gospel. Um, and cardinals like Cardinal Burke are the ones who are fighting for that, and the Pope and the people, his allies, are are arguing for something completely different, which is clear, is clearly articulated by the people that Pope Francis picks to represent him. Um, you've got Cardinal Hollerick, who he chose as the Rialto General of the Synod on Synodality. I mean, what clearer picture of the sort of people that he wants? You've got Cardinal Mario Grec, who's the Cardinal of Gozo. You know, he was the, the uh, Bishop of Gozo before he was made a Cardinal over his Metropolitan Archbishop, Archbishop Shikluna, um, who has got a prominent position in Rome. Um, Cardinal Grech is bishop of a tiny seven kilometre long um, dot in the Mediterranean. And all of a sudden he's put into this position of power. Why is he put there? Because he do what the Pope wants him to do. He was the one who, who um, pushed through the Maltese guidelines to Amoris Letizia. And so the Pope sees him very much as a yes man. 
And that's really why he's managed to, to get into the position he's, get, he's got into. So uh, this isn't a bad thing. Don't be upset about it. Be encouraged because it feels to me like something is going on. You know, there's something going on. Things are accelerating um, and it's bringing things out into the open. I think it can only serve to, um, it makes it clearer. It makes clearer what's going on. I think we have to recognise what's going on and we have to be honest about um, what's going on. Unfortunately, we, there's no point in pretending that this is something justified from Pope Francis. Uh, unfortunately, it's further evident. And like this is the sad thing. It's all this, it's the opposite of the language that he uses about mercy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera is that his actions show exactly the opposite. And I've always thought that his walk and his talk are, you know, completely at odds with each other. So let's all say a prayer for Cardinal Burke, who really is a, a very humble and holy man. And to me, he always seems like he doesn't really know <laughs> what to do um, because this is such an unprecedented sort of situation. And I know speaking to canon lawyers that there isn't really any canonical presence precedent for a pope like the one that we've got so um you know we just have to be we have to remember that this is all in god's hands and uh it's it's you know it will be brought out for the best so please do pray for cardinal burke and um, i'll try and join you with another video pretty soon god bless <laughs>